Playing with Power MTG. Powerful cards, powerful formats. Be sure to check out Dragon Shield for all of the best accessories to protect your decks. TCG Player for cards at great prices while supporting local game stores. And Patreon where you get awesome benefits for your direct support. Check us out on Twitch every Wednesday evening for great games of CEDH with special guests every week. If you sub to Twitch, you get additional perks such as access to our Discord. On the 26th of this month, we will be doing a charity stream for Black History Month. We have Alex and wonderful members of the community coming on to support the Blue Heart Foundation. Playing with Power will match contributions up to $1,000. Come out and support the cause. We will be going to SCGCon Indianapolis this coming March. We will be playing CEDH in the Command Zone and recording games while we are there. Stop by and say hello and let's all jam some games together. We will also be going to the Marchesa 2022 tournament in March. Marchesa is a two-day Magic the Gathering tournament series featuring over $2,000 in prizes. It will have CDH, Legacy, and Conquest tournaments. Check the links in the description below for more information. We hope to see you there. Our Mox Ruby tier on Patreon lets patrons submit decks for us to battle. That's what this game is tonight. So let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Mike, piloting Halar the Fire Fletcher. This deck, submitted by patron Jordan, aims to leverage its commander's ability, in conjunction with kick spells, to burn out the table. Mike's opening hand contains a command tower, forest, dockside extortionist, mox diamond, wild growth, emerald charm, and a circle of dreams druid. Next, we have Ryan, piloting Grand Arbiter Augustin IV. This deck, submitted by patron Rio, seeks to mill out his opponents by leveraging persistent petitioners. Ryan's opening hand contains an ancient tomb, Counterspell, Persistent Petitioners, Cavern of Souls, Island, Dramatic Reversal, and a Mental Misstep. After that we have Zack, Paladin Sisse, Weatherlight Captain, with Gigantha the Wellspring as the Companion. This deck, submitted by Patron Mikey, and built by Comedian MTG, leverages Gigantha in order to activate Sisse to tutor out Planeswalkers and win with a Planeswalker-focused combo. Zack's opening hang contains an Arid Mesa, Gaius Cradle, Mana Crypt, Archon of Ameria, Sylvan Library, Imperial Seal, and Xenagos the Reveler. Finally, we have Cal, piloting Oswald Fiddlebender. This deck, submitted by patron Alex, stacks out the board and tutors up a combo using its commander. Cal's opening hand contains a Hope of Gearper, Mana Crypt, Jeweled Amulet, Snow-Covered Plains, Archon of Ameria, Mirror Retriever, and an Abolish. Without further ado, let's kick off this dramatic dictation of these dueling decks. Mike wins the You, Me, and Debris challenge and gets to start us off. Mike draws a card for turn and plays a Command Tower. He casts a Mox Diamond, discarding Snow-Covered Forest. He casts a Wild Growth on his Command Tower. Mike passes. Ryan draws a card for turn and plays an island. He ends his turn. Zack draws and plays a Temple Garden into play untapped, paying two life. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts an Archon of Ameria. The table groans as they now know it's going to be one of those games, and Zack passes the turn. Cal draws and plays a Snow Covered Plains. He casts a Mana Crypt. Cal passes. Mike draws and plays a Snow Covered Forest. He casts Circle of Dreams Druid. Mike ends his turn. Ryan draws and plays an Ancient Tomb into play tapped through Archon. Ryan gives the turn to Zack. During his upkeep, Zack loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws and casts his commander, Sisei, Weatherlight Captain. He plays a Gaius Cradle for turn. He moves to combat and attacks Mike with Archon. Mike takes it and Zack shifts the turn to Cal. During his upkeep, Cal loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws and casts his commander, Oswald Fiddlebender. Cal passes the turn. Mike draws and also casts his commander, Halar the Fire Fletcher. Mike passes. Ryan draws and plays a Plains. He taps his Ancient Tomb to cast his commander, Grand Arbiter August in the fourth. Ryan gives the turn to Zack. During his upkeep, Zack loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and plays an Arid Mesa. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He casts Xenagos the Reveler. He activates Xenagos' first ability, adding two red. He buys Gigantha, putting it into his hand from outside the game. Zack ends his turn. During his upkeep, Cal loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and casts Hope of Gearper. He activates Oswald's ability, sacrificing Hope of Gearper and fetching up a Marble Diamond onto the battlefield tapped. Cal gives the turn to Mike. Mike draws and moves to combat. He attacks Xenagos with Halar. Xenagos takes it, and in his second main phase, Mike casts Dockside Extortionist. It enters, and Mike creates three treasures. Mike ends his turn. Ryan draws and plays a Misty Rainforest into play tapped. He casts Persistent Petitioners. Ryan passes. Turn his upkeep, Zack wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays a Verdant Catacombs. He cracks it and pays a life. In response, Mike casts Beast Within, targeting Sisse. Sisse is destroyed, and Zack creates a 3-3 Beast. Then Zack fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. He activates Xenagos' second ability, creating a 2-2 Sander with Haste. He casts Sylvan Library, and gives the turn to Cal. During his upkeep, Cal loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws and casts Mirror Retriever. He 
He activates Oswald's ability, sacrificing Mere Retriever. Retriever triggers, and Cal returns Hope of Gearper to his hand. Then Cal fetches up a scrap trawler onto the battlefield. Cal passes, discarding to hand size. Mike draws and casts Sylvan Library. Mike passes. Ryan draws and plays Cavern of Souls into play tapped, naming Advisor as it enters. Ryan passes. During his upkeep, Zack wins his Mana Crypt roll. During his draw step, he draws two additional through Sylvan Library, putting two back on top. He plays a Wooded Foothills for turn. He activates Xenagos' first ability, adding three red. He casts Ral's Eric. In response, Ryan cracks his Misty Rainforest, pays a life, and fetches up an island onto the battlefield. He casts Counterspell, countering Ral's Eric. With nothing else, Zack passes to Cal. During his upkeep, Cal loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and plays a Snow-Covered Plains. He casts Jeweled Amulet. He activates Oswald, sacrificing Jeweled Amulet, and fetches up an Expedition Map onto the battlefield. He cracks his Expedition Map. Scrap Trawler triggers, and Cal returns Jeweled Amulet to his hand. Then Cal fetches up a Mutavault into his hand. Cal ends his turn. During his draw step, Mike draws two extra through Sylvan Library, paying eight life to keep them both. In his main phase, he casts Eldritch Evolution, sacrificing Dockside Extortionist, and fetching up a Yison, the Wanderer Bard, onto the battlefield. Mike passes. At the end of Mike's turn, Ryan activates his Petitioners, milling himself for one. Ryan draws and plays a Gemstone Caverns into play tapped. Ryan passes. At the end of Ryan's turn, Zack cracks his Wooded Foothills, pays a life, and fetches up a Savannah onto the battlefield. During his upkeep, Zack wins his Mana Crypt roll. During his draw step, he draws two extra through Sylvan Library, paying four life to keep one extra. In his main phase, he activates Xenagos' first ability, adding three red. He recasts his commander, Sisse, Weatherlight Captain. He activates Sisse, fetching up Oko, Thief of Crowns, onto the battlefield. He activates Oko's second ability, turning Mike's Halar into a 3-3 Elk. Zack ships the turn to Cal. During his upkeep, Cal loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and plays a Mutavault into play tapped. He casts Consecrate Land, targeting Mutavault. Ryan, knowing what Cal's about to do, responds by paying two life to cast Mental Misstep, countering Consecrate Land. Cal passes. At the end of Cal's turn, Mike casts Inscription of Abundance, having Halar and Archon fight one another. Archon dies, the table cheers, and Mike moves to his turn. During his draw step, Mike draws two extra through Sylvan Library, paying eight life to keep them both. He plays a War Room for turn. He activates Yisa on the Wanderer Bard, getting a verse counter, and fetching up a Quirion Ranger onto the battlefield. He floats a green, then activates Quirion Ranger, returning Snow-Covered Forest to his hand, untapping Yisan. He activates Yisan, getting a verse counter, and fetches up a Scrib Ranger onto the battlefield. Then Mike taps his creature to help convoke Court of Calling, where X equals 5. In response, Ryan casts Flusterstorm, with all copies, being only one copy, targeting Cord. Cord is countered, and Mike passes the turn. At the end of Mike's turn, Ryan activates Petitioners, milling himself for one. Ryan draws and transmutes Muddle the Mixture, fetching up a pull from tomorrow into his hand. Ryan passes. During his upkeep, Zack wins his Mana Crypt roll. During his draw step, he draws two extra through Sylvan Library, paying four life to keep one extra. In his main phase, he plays a Plateau for turn. He activates Xenagos' first ability, adding three red. He casts Sneak Attack. The table looks for answers, but no one has any, and Sneak Attack resolves. Zack activates Sneak Attack, putting Gigantha onto the battlefield with haste. He taps Gigantha and activates Sisse, fetching up a Teferi Time Raveler onto the battlefield. He activates Sneak Attack, putting Bloom Tender onto the battlefield with haste. He activates Sisse, fetching up Teferi, who slows the sunset onto the battlefield. He taps Gaia's Cradle for 5, then activates Teferi, who slows the sunset's first ability, untapping Gaia's Cradle, Mana Crypt, and Gigantha. He taps Gigantha and activates Sisse, fetching up Kiora, Behemoth Beckoner, onto the battlefield. He activates Kiora's first ability, untapping Gigantha. He taps Gigantha and activates Sisse, fetching up Kiora, Master of Depths, onto the battlefield. He floats 5 green from Cradle, then activates Kiora, Master of Depths, untapping Gaia's Cradle and Gigantha. He taps Gigantha to activate Sisse, tutoring up Gehadron Dihada onto the battlefield. He activates Gehadron's second ability, targeting Gigantha, putting a Corruption counter on it, and untapping it. He taps Gigantha to activate Sisse, fetching up a Sahili Ray onto the battlefield. He activates Sahili's second ability, creating a copy of Gigantha with haste, sacrificing the original. He taps Gigantha to activate Sisse, fetching up an Oath of Teferi onto the battlefield, allowing Zack to activate his Planeswalkers a second time this turn. He floats mana from Cradle, then activates Kiora, Master of Depths, untapping Gigantha and Cradle. He taps Gigantha and activates Sisse, fetching up a Chain Veil onto the battlefield. Zack presents a loop of activating Chain Veil, giving each Planeswalker an additional activated ability this turn, then using Teferi, who slows the sunset, to untap Chain Veil, Gaia's Cradle, and Mana Crypt. With this loop, he can activate his Planeswalkers infinite times. He activates Sahili Ray's first ability over and over, dealing damage to each opponent until they are dead, and Zack wins the game. Wow, what an amazing game. 
The Archon of Ameria really did work this game, and the rest of the table wants another crack at it, so they go again. In this game, Cal brings back Oswald Fiddlebender, and his opening hand contains a Mishra's Factory, Torpor Orb, Jeweled Amulet, Blessed Breath, two Snow-Covered Plains, and his London Mulligan is a Snow-Covered Plains. Mike brings back Halar the Fire Fletcher, and his opening hand contains a City of Brass, Wild Growth, Rishkar's Expertise, Scrib Ranger, Dockside Extortionist, Cathartic Pyre, and a Nykthos, Shrine to Nyx. Ryan brings back Grand Arbiter, and his opening hand contains a Muddle the Mixture, Mana Drain, Lotus Petal, Null Rod, Persistent Petitioners, Island, and his London Mulligan is a Dust to Dawn. Zack brings back Siste and Gigantha this game, and his opening hand contains a Misty Rainforest, Arid Mesa, Savannah, Deathrite Shaman, Fey Burrow Elder, Graft Digger's Cage, and a Spell Pierce. And Cal gets to start us off. Cal draws and plays a Snow-Covered Plains. He casts a Lotus Petal. He sacks his petal to help cast his commander, Oswald Fiddlebender. He casts a Jeweled Amulet and passes the turn. Mike draws and plays a City of Brass. He taps the City of Brass to cast Wild Growth. Mike passes. Ryan draws and plays an Island. He casts Lotus Petal. He sacks his petal to help cast Null Rod. The table sighs, Cal especially, and Ryan gives the turn to Zack. Zack draws and plays a Savannah. He casts Deathrite Shaman. Zack passes. Cal draws and plays a Snow-Covered Plains. He casts Blind Obedience. The table sighs even more, and Cal gives the turn to Mike. Mike draws and plays a Nykthos, Shrine to Nyx. He taps his City of Brass to help cast his commander, Halar the Fire Fletcher, which enters tap due to Blind Obedience. Mike ends his turn. Ryan draws and plays a Hallowed Fountain, into play untapped, paying two life. He casts Persistent Petitioners. It resolves, enters tapped, and Ryan gives the turn to Zack. Zack draws and plays an Arid Mesa. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He activates Deathrite, exiling Arid Mesa to help cast Faber Elder. Zack ends his turn. Cal draws and plays a Mishra's Factory. He activates Oswald Fiddlebender, sacrificing Jeweled Amulet, and fetches up an Esper Sentinel onto the battlefield. He casts Torpor Orb, because there wasn't enough stacks at the table already, and Cal passes to Mike. Mike draws and plays a Wooded Foothills. He moves to combat and attacks Zack with Halar. Zack takes it, and Mike passes. Ryan draws and casts another Persistent Petitioners. He ends his turn. At the end of Ryan's turn, Mike taps his City of Brass to cast Cathartic Pyre, targeting Faber Elder. Esper Sentinel triggers, and Mike pays. Faber dies, and the turn moves to Zack. Zack draws and plays a Tundra. He casts his commander, Sisse Weatherlike Captain. Zack ships the turn to Cal. Cal draws and then activates Oswald, sacrificing Torpor Orb and fetching up the Book of Exalted Deeds onto the battlefield. Cal ends his turn. At the end of Cal's turn, Mike cracks his Wooded Foothills, pays a life, and fetches up a Stomping Ground onto the battlefield tapped. Mike draws and moves to combat. He attacks Zack with Halar. Zack takes it, and Mike passes. Ryan draws and plays an Island. He casts Persistent Petitioners and gives the turn to Zack. Zack draws and plays a Mana Confluence. He moves to combat and attacks Mike with Sisse. In response, Mike flashes in a Scrib Ranger. It resolves and enters tap through Blind Obedience. Mike then activates Scrib Ranger, returning Stomping Ground to his hand to untap Halar. Mike then blocks Sisse with Halar. In response, Zack activates Deathrite Shaman, exiling Mike's Wooded Foothills, and taps his Mana Confluence to help activate Sisse. He fetches up a Ragavan Nimble Pilfer onto the battlefield. This now makes Sisse a 3-3. In a turn of events that neither player expected, both Sisse and Halar die. With nothing else, and the table scratching their heads a bit, Zack passes the turn. Cal draws and casts Graft Digger's Cage. Extort triggers from Blind Obedience, and Cal pays, with each opponent losing one and Cal gaining three. Cal activates Oswald, sacrificing Graft Digger's Cage, and fetches up a Scroll Rack onto the battlefield. All through, Cal passes. Mike draws and replays his Stomping Ground into play untapped, paying two life. He taps the City of Brass to help cast Dockside Extortionist. It enters tapped, and Mike creates five treasures, which cannot be activated due to Null Rod and enter tap through Blind Obedience. Mike casts Birds of Paradise and gives the turn to Ryan. At the end of Mike's turn, Ryan activates Persistent Petitioners, milling Mike for one. Ryan draws, takes no actions, and passes. Zack draws and plays a Misty Rainforest. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. He casts Eidolon of Rhetoric. He activates Deathrite, exiling Misty Rainforest, and taps Mana Confluence to help activate Gigantha, putting it from outside of the game into his hand. Zack ends his turn. Cal draws and casts a Mana Crypt. He activates Oswald, sacrificing Mana Crypt, and fetches up a Hope of Girapur onto the battlefield. Cal gives the turn to Mike. Mike draws and taps his City of Brass to help recast his commander, Halar. Mike passes the turn. At the end of Mike's turn, Ryan activates three Petitioners, milling Mike for three. Ryan draws and plays a Prismatic Vista. He passes. Zack draws and casts Saheeli Ray. Esper Sentinel triggers and Zack pays. Saheeli resolves and Zack activates her first ability, scrying one and dealing one to each opponent. Zack ends his turn. 
Cal draws and activates Oswald, sacrificing Hope of Gearper, and fetches up a marble diamond onto the battlefield tapped. He casts Argivian Fine, returning Mana Crypt from his graveyard to his hand. Cal ships the turn to Mike. Mike draws and casts Sylvan Scrying. Esper triggers and Mike pays. Sylvan Scrying resolves and Mike fetches up a Gaia's Cradle into his hand. He plays Gaia's Cradle for turn. He moves to combat and attacks Sahili Ray with Scrib Ranger. Sahili takes it and Mike passes the turn. At the end of Mike's turn, Ryan cracks his Prismatic Vista, pays a life, and fetches up an island onto the battlefield. He then activates three petitioners, milling Mike for three. Ryan draws and casts his commander, Grand Arbiter Augustin IV. In response, Mike taps his City of Brass to cast Pyroblast, targeting Sahili Ray. Esper triggers, and Mike pays. Sahili is destroyed, and Grand Arbiter resolves. Ryan passes. At the end of Ryan's turn, Zack taps his Mana Confluence to activate Deathrite Shaman, exiling Mike's Eldritch Evolution, with each opponent losing two life. Zack draws and taps Deathrite, exiling Prismatic Vista, and taps Mana Confluence to help cast Gigantha the Wellspring. Zack passes. Cal draws and casts a Mana Crypt, extorting it through Blind Obedience. He activates Oswald, sacrificing Scroll Rack and fetching up a Scrap Trawler onto the battlefield. Cal passes. At the end of Cal's turn, Mike casts Crop Rotation, sacrificing Nykthos as an additional cost. In response, Ryan pays 2 life to cast Mental Misstep, countering Crop Rotation. Mike, a little frustrated at the 2 for 1, moves to his turn. Mike draws and casts Rishkar's Expertise. Esper triggers and Cal draws. Expertise resolves and Mike draws 3. Unfortunately, he cannot cast the spell for free due to Eidolon of Rhetoric. He plays a Mana Confluence for turn. Mike passes. Ryan draws and plays a Plains. He casts Linvala, Keeper of Silence. Zack and Cal sigh and Ryan passes the turn. Zack draws and casts Rhythm of the Wild. Esper triggers and Zack taps his Mana Confluence to pay. Zack ends his turn. During his upkeep, Cal wins his Mana Crypt flip. He draws and plays a Snow-Covered Plains. He casts Aura of Silence. Cal passes the turn. Mike draws and plays a Command Tower. He casts an Arbor Elf. He ends his turn. At the end of Mike's turn, Ryan activates Petitioners, tapping four Advisors and milling Mike for 12. Ryan draws and casts Mentor of the Meek. Ryan passes. Zack draws and casts Demonic Tutor. Esper triggers and Cal draws. Zack fetches up a card into his hand and gives the turn to Cal. During his upkeep, Cal wins his Mana Crypt flip. He draws and plays the Snow-Covered Plains. He casts Phyrexian Revoker, extorting it through Blind Obedience. It resolves, and Cal names Sisse Weatherlight Captain as it enters. Cal passes. At the end of Cal's turn, the Book of Exalted Deeds triggers and Cal creates a 3-3 Angel. Still in the end step, Mike taps his City of Brass and his Cradle to help cast Shared Summons. In response, Ryan casts Mana Drain, countering Summons. The turn moves to Mike. Mike draws and taps his Cradle and his Mana Confluence to cast Everflowing Chalice, kick twice. Hilar triggers, gets a plus one plus one counter, and deals one damage to each opponent. Chalice resolves, and Mike passes. At the end of Mike's turn, Ryan activates Petitioners, milling Mike for 12. Ryan draws, and in his first main phase, he adds five colorless through Mana Drain. He transmutes Muddle the Mixture, fetching up a Pull from Tomorrow into his hand. He casts Pull from Tomorrow, where X equals six. Esper triggers, and Cal draws. In response, Zack taps his Mana Confluence to cast Spell Pierce, targeting Pull from Tomorrow. Esper triggers, and Cal draws. Spell Pierce resolves, Pull from Tomorrow is countered, Ryan sinks his head in dismay, and passes to Zack. Zack draws and casts Finehorn Elves. He passes. During his upkeep, Cal wins his Mana Crypt flip. He draws and plays an Urza Saga, getting its first counter. He casts Mox Opal, extorting it through Blind Obedience. He moves to combat and attacks Zack with his Angel. Zack takes it, and Cal passes the turn. At the end of Cal's turn, Exalted Deeds triggers and Cal creates a 3-3 Angel. Mike draws and moves to combat. He attacks Zack with Scrib Ranger and Ryan with Halar. Both take it, and in his second main phase, Mike casts Finehorn Elves. Mike passes. At the end of Mike's turn, Ryan activates Petitioners, milling Mike for 12. Still in the end step, Zack casts Swords to Plowshares, targeting Ryan's Linvala. Esper triggers, and Cal draws. Swords resolves, Linvala is exiled, and Ryan gains 3 life. The turn passes to Ryan. Ryan draws, takes no actions, and passes. At the end of Ryan's turn, now freed up from under Linvala, Zack taps Gigantha to activate Deathrite, exiling Eternal Witness from Mike's graveyard, and Zack gains 2 life. Zack draws and casts Rhystic Study. Esper triggers and Cal draws. Study resolves and Zack passes. At the end of Zack's turn, Cal sacrifices his Aura of Silence, destroying Nullrod. During his upkeep, Cal loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws and in his first main phase, Urza Saga gets another counter. He floats mana from Mox Opal, then activates Oswald, sacrificing Mox Opal, and fetches up an Expedition Map onto the battlefield. He activates Expedition Map, sacrificing it. Scrap Trawler triggers and Cal returns Mox Opal to his hand. He fetches up a Mutavault into his hand. He plays Mutavault. He activates Mutavault, turning it into a creature with all creature types until the end of turn. Cal activates the Book of Exalted Deeds, exiling it and putting an Enlightened Counter on Mutavault. It now gains, you cannot lose the game, and your opponents cannot win the game. 
This is a major problem for the table, since now Cal will never turn Mutavolt into a creature ever again, and the team has to find a way to destroy the land. Cal casts Mox Opal, extorting it through blind obedience, paying for Ristic. He moves to combat and attacks Zack with two 3-3 angels. Zack takes it, and Cal passes, discarding to hand size. Mike draws and casts Keen Sense on Scrib Ranger, paying for both Ristic and Esper. He moves to combat and attacks Ryan with Scrib Ranger. Ryan takes it, Keen Sense triggers, and Mike draws. Mike ends his turn. At the end of Mike's turn, Ryan activates Petitioners, milling Mike for 12. Ryan draws and plays an island. He passes. At the end of Ryan's turn, Zack taps his Mana Confluence to activate Deathrite, exiling Kogla the Titan Ape from Mike's graveyard, gaining 2 life. Zack draws and moves to combat. He attacks Cal with Ragavan. Cal takes it and Ragavan triggers. Zack creates a treasure and Cal exiles Lion's Eye Diamond off of the top of his library. In his second main phase, Zack casts Domri and Ark of Bolas. Esper triggers and Zack pays. He activates Domri's second ability, having Gigantha fight Cal's Phyrexian Revoker. In response, Cal casts Path to Exile, targeting Gigantha. Ristic triggers and Zack draws. Path resolves, Gigantha is exiled, and Zack searches for a basic land, failing to find. Domri's ability fizzles, and then Zack plays a Taiga for turn. All through, Zack passes. During his upkeep, Cal wins his Mana Crypt flip. He draws, and in his first main phase, Urza's Saga triggers. In response, Cal activates Urza's Saga, creating a construct. He then sacrifices Saga and fetches up a Sensei's Divining Top onto the battlefield. Cal casts Bore the Weatherlight, extorting it through blind obedience. He looks at the top five, reveals an Ancient Den into his hand, and then bottoms the rest. He plays Ancient Den for turn. He activates Oswald, sacrificing Sensei's Divining Top. Scrap Trawler triggers, and Cal returns Jeweled Amulet to his hand. Then Cal fetches up a Mirror Retriever onto the battlefield. He moves to combat and attacks Zack with two Angels. Zack takes it, and Cal passes the turn. Mike draws and taps his City of Brass to cast Emerald Charm, targeting Eidolon of Rhetoric, pain for Ristic and Esper. Eidolon is destroyed, and finally out from under it, Mike moves to combat. He attacks Ryan with Halar and Scrib Ranger. Ryan declares no blocks, and in response, Mike casts Invigorate for its alternate cost, gaining Cal 3 life and giving Halar plus 4 plus 4. He then casts Vines of Vastwood, kicked, targeting Halar. Halar triggers, gets a counter, and each opponent takes 2. Then Halar gets an additional plus 4 plus 4. Then Ryan takes the massive hit, and Mike passes the turn. At the end of Mike's turn, Ryan activates Petitioners, milling Mike for 12. Ryan draws and casts Persistent Petitioners. Ristic triggers, and Zack draws. It enters, Mentor of the Meek triggers, and Ryan pays, drawing a card. He plays a Misty Rainforest. Ryan passes. At the end of Ryan's turn, Zack activates Deathrite Shaman, exiling Hope of Giraper from Cal's graveyard, gaining 2 life. Zack draws and activates Domri's first ability, adding a red. He plays a Gaia's Cradle. He casts Sisse, Weatherlight Captain. Zack ends his turn. During his upkeep, Cal wins his Mana Crypt flip. He draws and plays a Snow-Covered Plains. He activates Oswald, sacrificing Mirror Retriever. Scrap Trawler and Mirror Retriever trigger, and Cal returns Scroll Rack and Sensei's Divining Top to his hand. Cal then fetches up a Blasting Station onto the battlefield. He casts Scroll Rack, extorting it through Blind Obedience and paying for Ristic. He casts Sensei's Divining Top, extorting it through Blind Obedience. Ristic triggers and Zack draws. He casts a Jeweled Amulet. He extorts it through Blind Obedience and Zack draws through Ristic. He moves to combat and attacks Zack with two Angels and Ryan with his 12-12 Construct. Ryan blocks with a Petitioner and Zack declares no blocks. In response, Zack activates Deathrite, exiling Ashaya, Soul of the Wild, from Mike's graveyard, gaining two life. Zack then casts Abrupt Decay, targeting one of Cal's angels. Esper triggers, and Cal draws. In response, Cal activates Blasting Station, sacrificing the angel, and dealing one to Zack. Abrupt Decay fizzles, and still in response, Ryan activates Petitioners to mill the rest of Mike's library to avoid losing to combat on his turn. Then damage happens, a Petitioner dies, and Zack takes the hit. All through, Cal passes the turn. At the end of Cal's turn, Mike casts Noxious Revival, targeting Finale of Devastation in his graveyard, putting it on top of his library. Mike draws the last card in his library, which is Finale of Devastation. He taps Guy's Cradle, City of Brass, and Mana Confluence to help cast Finale of Devastation, where X equals 10. Ristic and Esper trigger, and Zack and Cal draw. Knowing Endurance is in Mike's graveyard, and he can cast that to put his whole graveyard back into his library, Ryan responds by casting Narset's Reversal, targeting Finale of Devastation. In response, Mike casts Veil of Summer. Ristic triggers, and Zack draws. Veil of Summer resolves, but Ryan cast a blue spell this turn. Veil of Summer's draw ability isn't a May ability, so Mike attempts to draw from an empty library and loses the game. The turn moves to Ryan. Ryan draws, holds open mana, and passes. Zack draws and moves to combat. He attacks Cal with Ragavan. Cal takes it, and Ragavan triggers. Zack creates a treasure, and Cal exiles Ruins of Trocare off of the top of his library. 
In his second main phase, Zack activates Domri's second ability, having Sisse fight Phyrexian Revoker. Revoker dies, and Zack taps his cradle to help activate Sisse. He fetches up a Lavinia, Azorius Renegade, onto the battlefield tapped with a plus one plus one counter through Rhythm of the Wild. Blasting Station triggers and untaps. Zack attempts to move through phases, and in response, Cal activates Blasting Station, sacrificing Esper Sentinel, targeting Zack. Scrap Trawler triggers, and Cal returns Lotus Petal to his hand. In response to Blasting Station, Zack activates Deathrite, exiling Mirror Retriever from Cal's graveyard and gaining two life. Then Zack takes one, and now back in his second main phase since Cal took actions, Zack decides to cast Grafdigger's Cage. Zack then passes the turn. During his upkeep, Cal loses his Mana Crypt flip and takes three damage. He draws and moves to combat. He attacks Zack with his Construct and Ryan with his Angel. Zack blocks with his Finehorn Elves and Ryan declares no blocks. Ryan takes it and Finehorn Elves dies. In his second main phase, Cal casts Lotus Petal, extorting it through Blind Obedience, killing Ryan and bringing Zack to one. Cal then activates Blasting Station, sacrificing his Construct, pinging Zack for one, and Cal wins the game. Ladies and gentlemen, what an amazing pair of games tonight. These decks brought by our Mox Ruby patrons did not disappoint. Each one really wanted to show off the deck's capabilities and we got to see them on full display. In game one, seeing Zack go off with the Planeswalker combo was a sight to behold. The chain of different searches through Sisse took some knowledge and skill to pull off. In game two, each player had their contribution to the stacks board and it was effectively shutting down the other players. It got to a point where everyone had to wait until some stacks left before they could execute their plans. When Cal was finally freed up, his deck was able to effectively tutor up more and more combo pieces. The extra spicy play was Mutavault and the Book of Exalted Deeds, effectively creating a very hard lock on the rest of the table. The most valuable card in tonight's games goes to Eidolon of Rhetoric. Sure, there were a lot of stacks pieces on the board, but it was this piece, however, that absolutely turned this game into a grind. No one was able to effectively move ahead due to this one card stopping their progression. We highly encourage you to check out the decks in the description below. You get to see each deck that was submitted by our Mox Rubies this month. If you ever wanted to submit your own deck for us to play, check out our Mox Ruby tier on Patreon. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in next time when we do get out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.